also known as the triboxylic acid cycle or the Krebs cycle, discovered by Hans Aldolf Krebs in 1937. So what exactly is it? It's a series of chemical reactions used by all aerobic organisms. You know, those who can survive and grow in an oxygenated environment. Kind of like mm, you and me. To release stored energy through oxidation of acetyl-CoA, one of the molecules in this cycle. So this is derived from carbohydrates like bread, fats like milk, and protein like fish into carbon dioxide and chemical energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate, ATP. And this is like energy your body needs to do work. Oh, one more thing. What is an enzyme? It is a macromolecule that speeds up a reaction, kind of like coffee speeds us up in the morning. So let's begin. There are eight steps in the citric acid cycle. Step one is the formation of citrate via the collagen condensation. So here we have acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate. Citrate synthase is the enzyme that speeds it up so that we can form citrate. Step two is the formation of isocitrate via cis-aconitase. So first you have citrate from the last step. We have our enzyme and then we make the step in the middle that isn't quite ready yet because you have to add stuff to it. So it goes through with the enzyme again and then we have isocitrate. Step three starts with isocitrate and then we have our enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase. Here we move a couple things around to kind of make the product that we need but the step isn't done. We release CO2, making this other molecule move stuff around, and then finally to give us the step 3 pause of alpha ketoglutarate. We continue with step 4 with alpha ketoglutarate, some of its friends to help him out, and also the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex to make succinyl CoA as well as CO2. Step 5 starts with succinyl CoA. It does use some of its friends, but most importantly, the enzyme succinyl CoA synthase to eventually give succinate. So we're in the home stretch, and step 6 starts with succinate, as well as FAD to help it out, and succinate dehydrogenase, which will eventually give fumarate. 7 is very important for the disease we're going to talk about. We start with fumarate, then we have a step in the middle that needs work, so we add OH. Then, we use the enzyme fumarate to finally give us L-malate. Step 8 is our final step. We start with L-malate, then we convert to one of the products that we actually started with. This is accomplished by using the enzyme malate dehydrogenase. The end product is oxaloacetate. So what exactly is fumarate hydrate deficiency and what does it have? It's a genetic disease. So that means it's only transmitted from your parents to you. Both parents have the good and the bad gene. The good one is the big A and the bad one's the little A. They won't show the bad trait, but they can pass both of them on to their child, which will show the deficiency. It's caused by a mutation in step 7. The deficiency in the enzyme fumarate causes a decrease in the product, l malate which causes a decrease in the overall ATP made in your body. If you look back at step 7, we are converting fumarate to L-malate with the enzyme fumarase. However, that doesn't work. So we have a buildup of citrate as well as alpha-ketoglutarate and so much more. It's just a mess. This buildup leads to a lack of energy as well as seizures, problems developing, and sometimes death. 